So my oldest son encouraged me to start a series telling stories about my life. I wasn't really interested when he mentioned it, but the more I thought about it, I considered it could be therapeutic. Human memory is far from perfect, and I have had a few head injuries in my adulthood, so I often feel like there are holes in many of my memories. So when I encounter those holes, I tend to fill them in with things that just make sense to me. With that disclaimer in mind, these are the stories of Joe. In honor of Labor Day weekend and all the good folks who spent their time out on the boats on the lakes this past weekend, I'd like to share a very special edition of the stories of Joe. I thought about this because my sister-in-law invited me to go out on the boat this weekend and I had to decline because of something we like to call my boat curse. So the very first occurrence of the boat curse was when I was 14 years old, I believe. So my dad had just bought the Millennium Falcon. Not that Millennium Falcon. The Millennium Falcon in our family was a motorboat that we were all excited about because my papa, which is my dad's dad, um, had come across it and he told us it had a Z28 engine in it. So we were all super stoked to get it out on the lake and see what it could do. So my dad, my Uncle Bill, one of my Uncle Bills, I have several, all took the Millennium Falcon out on Jackson Lake. We did a lot of fishing in those days, so we took the boat fishing, and our version of fishing was more like just hanging out on the boat with the poles over the, over the end watching the bobbers catch nothing. So we did that for a while, and as usual, we caught nothing. So then, my dad, my Uncle Bill, came up with the idea to find out what that Z28 engine could do. And we took that boat out as fast as it could go for a little bit. And then suddenly, we just hit a big bump, and the engine stopped. Later, we would find out that there was this pin that kind of held the the um, propellers in place that make a, the engine of a speedboat go. And we had hit kind of a log floating under the boat and knocked that pin out. So our Z28 engine was completely useless. Fortunately, my Uncle Bill had brought a little trolling motor with us just in case something like that had happened. And it happened. So he went to hold it over the edge and turned it on and I guess no one thought of any way of securing the trolling motor to the back of the boat because he was holding it with his hands and it slipped right out and sank to the bottom of the lake. So now we had no trolling motor. Fortunately we did have an oar and my uncle reached down to my feet to pick up the oar and snapped it in two. He did not mention that I should move my foot off of the oar when I was standing on it. So we had one last tool at our disposal, and that was an anchor. So we took turns, swinging the anchor around and throwing it as far as we could in front of the boat, and then pulling ourselves a few feet. This went on for an hour or so got us all the way back to the dock and then I took the rope and tried to stand on the dock and guide the boat up to the trailer to get it back on Uncle Bill's truck. While doing that I was walking backwards and I did not take note of the L shape of the dock before I started walking backwards and I walked straight off the dock and fell into Jackson Lake which was exactly what we had been trying to avoid with all the incidents trying to get back to the dock. Because if you're not familiar with Jackson Lake in Georgia, 
it is not the cleanest lake on earth. I specifically remember as soon as I got my nose above the water, I could smell what can only be described as dirty bathroom. So I climbed out of the lake, finished pulling the boat onto the trailer, and we had to stand around waiting for me to dry off because we obviously didn't bring towels. We weren't planning on swimming in Jackson Lake. And Uncle Bill did not want dirty Jackson Lake water all over the seats of his truck. But we survived. And there are a few lessons to be learned from this story. But I think the most important one is if you can't see where you're going, at least tread carefully.